HOA Karen gets shut down and moves away. I live in a city in the northeast in a relatively small condo association with six units. It's surrounded by new construction, but this particular building is a very old 1850s mansion that was converted into condos back in the 1980s. Because of this, every unit is totally unique with different square footage and layouts. This is important for later. So the jerk neighbor, let's call her Monica, our Karen, was the daughter of the owner. She's also a has-been politician who was a former mayor of a small city in the state who lost re-election almost 10 years ago. But she mentions this all the time, in emails, in casual conversation. My former time as mayor, I'm very connected in the state, as you know, and on and on. Another neighbor, let's call her Rachel, decided to sell her unit. As part of this process, she made improvements on it and had contractors frequently. We have a back hallway that's required for contractors to access units, and a painter had left some minor things on the first floor as he was working. Jerk Monica apparently did have some connections, because without asking my neighbor or talking to the contractor, she managed to get a city inspector to come right over, who immediately find the contractor for impeding access in the hallway despite it being a small number of supplies. The contractor, he was so ticked that he said he would never do another job in this building. Very annoying as trusted contractors are hard to find. Monica did this because she likes to flex and, well, she's a jerk. Well, I spoke to Rachel before listing and I offered to buy it from her direct. We agreed on a price and avoided real estate agent fees, and plus, she just wanted a simple transaction as she already had a new house. I acquire the unit and I start renting it out. And then another neighbor, Phoebe, wants to sell. The real estate agent emails all the owners in the building and tells us about the open house. Well, it turns out Monica wasn't contacted because she's not an owner, and because of this takes it upon herself to report the real estate agent to the state board for discrimination because Monica is black. Cue the real estate agent calling me in a panic, asking me to vouch for her in a disciplinary review, which I do oblige. Just absolutely insane behavior. So the unit sells over asking. Everything is great, as it's boosting the value of our units and the building. However, the buyer is insisting that the condo board signs off that all HOA fees are paid with a form that's submitted to the Registry of Deeds, which requires a valid condo board. Since Rachel moved out, there is no condo board. We've all been derelict in our duties. We haven't had an association meeting in years, and not a single valid trustee since Rachel moved away. I read the condo docs with a magnifying glass over and over. Turns out, with my two units, my wife and myself can each represent one unit and have 52% of the voting power, because our two units have 52% of the total square footage. Now ours are each three bedroom, while the rest are two bedroom and two are one bedroom. We have just slightly the max footage of the building and the majority beneficial interest, which effectively gives us full say over the building. As the sale process is happening, Monica's mother passes away from cancer, which she had been fighting for years. Monica now becomes an owner as she inherits the unit. In order to be elected to the condo board, you need the majority of beneficial interest in at least three units to vote for you. We have 52% of the beneficial interest, but only two units. Therefore, one more unit has to agree. I get the owner who's selling and moving away to agree to vote for myself and my wife, and I vote for them in return. That gives quorum. We sign off on the condo fees, and then the seller resigns from the board promptly. Now only my wife and I are trustees. According to strict reading of the condo docs, my wife and I now have de facto control of the board and never have to have another election, because with beneficial interest 52%, we never have to approve anyone else, and even if everyone else votes, they can only get a maximum of 48%. In this situation, the remaining trustees can be the trustees indefinitely if there cannot be quorum achieved. Monica, throughout everything, has been protesting aggressively, accusing us of racism, despite my wife and I being Vietnamese, and sending legal threats. My lawyer has been countering everything, and there is no issue. Monica has now decided to sell and move away. 
Turns out, she inherited $15,000 in unpaid condo dues that no one bothered to collect because we had no board and were disorganized that she will have to pay in order to get approval to sell. Furthermore, all of her contractors doing work on the inherited unit have had to park far away because my wife and I have been very strict about hallways and driveway parking of vehicles, impeding access, which is absolutely not allowed. We even got a van towed who was doing work on her unit because it impeded access. The tow truck works for the condo association rather than the city so we could approve it as the trustees. If Monica hadn't been such a total jerk, we would have been totally reasonable about everything. But once she started bringing lawyers and inspectors and playing the racism angle, everything became war for us. And she lost. Do you agree with this? I wish you ran my HOA. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's going to pull all those cards and think they're better than you and you have the power, look at what you can do. What would have you done? This is an HOA story about ticking the head of the HOA off. A friend of mine not long ago painted his house. He lives in a development that has an HOA. He admits that he and his wife made the first mistake by not reading the HOA handbook close enough, so they didn't realize that they had to get the color approved by the HOA. On the first day of painting, the head of the HOA stopped by and talked to them, made small talk, talked about ways to make painting the house easier, and so on. At this time, the HOA head knew that they hadn't gotten the collar approved because he sits on the three-person panel that approves the collars. However, he opted to not say anything to them. Instead, he waited until they had the entire house painted and then told them that the collar was not approved because there are too many other houses with a similar collar. It was a lighter shade of green. So, faced with having to spend the time and money to repaint the entire house, he and his wife decided to get a little revenge. They submitted the form and the collar swatch for the new collar and were approved. Knowing the panel had to take time out of their lives to meet every time that they submit a collar, they decided to submit another collar swatch and form, saying that they had changed their minds. This collar was one that they knew would never be approved. As assumed, it was denied. They had to submit again, and again they submitted a collar they knew would never be approved. Again, they were denied. They repeated this four or five times before the HOA head contacted them and told them that the first swatch they submitted was still approved and to not submit another swatch for approval, that they were tired of playing games. He replied telling him that it turns out that the caller is no longer available and that they needed to submit one last swatch, which, of course, was a caller they knew wouldn't be approved. This time, the HOA told them that if they submitted another unapprovable swatch, they would be fine and billed for the panel's time. He submitted another swatch that was a color that he knew would never be approved, and with it, a photocopy of the page from the handbook covering the process of getting a color approved. He pointed out that there was nothing in there that mentioned any limit to a number of swatches that a person could submit. This entire process took a few months, after eight or nine swatches that were denied, the head of the HOA was fuming mad and showed up at their door, telling them that he wasn't leaving until they had decided on a color for the house. My friend pointed out that the handbook says the only way for a color to be approved was with a vote from the full panel. The HOA head called the two other people and they came over, and once they were all sat down, he and his wife shuffled through about ten different swatches of crazy colors before finally showing them one that was a light green color. Frustrated, they approved it and left. A few weeks later, the head of the HOA contacted him to see when they were going to paint, and he told them they already had. The swatch that they approved was the color that the house was already painted. A week later, he got an angry letter from the HOA and a bill for their time. He refused to pay and will fight it. A couple of weeks after that, everyone got a revised handbook in the mail with very detailed rules on how to get a color approved. My friend then called the head of the HOA and told him all of this could have just been avoided if he had just said something that day when he came over and talked to them as they started painting. But he decided to be a jerk, so they decided to be jerks back to him. Now, I'm no expert on the lean and fine situation and how that all plays out. I was just going off of something I was told. Apparently, if he doesn't pay the fine, they can file a lien against him and they could foreclose on his house. When I told him this, he explained that the handbook actually had a detailed procedure on how fines are to be handed out and collected. There's apparently a few steps that the HOA has to take before they'll file a lien, and none of those have happened yet. 
The fine is 300 bucks, so if it escalates to the next step and they try to collect the money, he will take action, even if that means swallowing his pride and paying. He's going to double check just to make sure they haven't tried to file a lien on the sly. Isn't it satisfying to get away with just getting back at the HOA? What do you think? HOA story time. I couldn't believe the audacity of HOA Karen. It all started when my family and I moved into our dream house in a quiet neighborhood. Our home was a vision of elegance, a little slice of suburban paradise. I could tell from the get-go that HOA Karen was eyeing our property with envy, and little did I know, that envy would soon turn into a full-blown feud. You see, HOA Karen, or as I like to call her, Queen of the Neighborhood, had an unhealthy obsession with power and control. She seemed to think that she was the unofficial ruler of our little community, and she wasn't shy about it. It was clear that she had a special relationship with the HOA president, and she wasn't afraid to use it to her advantage. The trouble began when we decided to spruce up our front yard with some beautiful landscaping. We added a quaint garden, a tasteful bird bath, and some charming yard decor. My family and I loved spending time in our garden, and it was our pride and joy. It was like HOA Karen's kryptonite, she couldn't stand the idea that our house might look better than hers. She started making a fuss about every little thing in the neighborhood. She'd complain about my next door neighbor's wind chimes, about the color of another neighbor's mailbox, and she'd file complaint after complaint with the HOA for the tiniest infractions. But she saved her most venomous hatred for us and our garden. One sunny morning, I was sipping some coffee on the porch when I spotted her. HOA Karen was lurking near our garden, a sly grin on her face. She bent down, and before my eyes, she ripped up a patch of our beautiful flowers and crushed our Welcome to the Last Name family sign. My heart sank, and anger surged through me like an electric shock. I couldn't believe someone would stoop so low. Fortunately, we had installed security cameras all around the house, not only to protect our property, but also because something about HOA Karen's attitude had just set off alarm bells in my head. It was a good thing we did, because those cameras were about to become our saving grace. So when I reviewed the footage later that day, it was clear. There she was, HOA Karen just vandalizing our garden. I could not believe my luck. So I immediately called our lawyer. He happened to be a longtime family friend. So he saw the footage, and he just could not hide his excitement. We were going to take HOA Karen to court. Of course, HOA Karen's first move was to blame our sweet neighbor, Sarah, name changed, for the damage. She claimed that Sarah had some vendetta against us and destroyed our garden. Sarah, bless her heart, was the nicest person you could ever meet, and we were good friends. I know Sarah wouldn't hurt a fly, let alone our garden. The lawsuit was on, and it was about to be heated. Our lawyer was a force to be reckoned with, and he'd put together an airtight case. He showed the footage, interviewed witnesses, and dug up a pile of other complaints against HOA Karen. It was clear that she was on a power trip, and her jealousy was driving her to ruin our lives. As the court date approached, I could feel the tension in the neighborhood. Word had gotten around, and it seemed like everyone had a story about HOA Karen's reign of terror. Even the HOA president was starting to distance himself from her, it was poetic justice at its finest. The day of the trial finally arrived and the courtroom was packed. Our lawyer presented our case with precision and passion. He laid out all the evidence, showed the footage, and questioned the witnesses. It was a sight to behold and I couldn't help but feel a glimmer of satisfaction as I watched HOA Karen just squirm over there in her seat. HOA's Karen defense, it was flimsy at best. She continued to point fingers at Sarah, despite all the evidence stacked against her. Her arrogance was on full display as she rambled on about her supposed innocence. It was clear to everyone in that courtroom that she had no leg to stand on. Finally, the verdict was in. The judge ruled in our favor, and HOA Karen was held responsible for vandalizing our property. She was ordered to pay for the damages, as well as our legal fees and it felt so amazing to finally get some justice after all this time. 
watching HOA Karen's smug expression crumble was the sweetest victory. She had thought that she could rule the neighborhood with an iron fist, but justice had prevailed. Her reputation was tarnished, and the neighborhood was finally free from her demands. When you're in a bind and you push through as hard as you can and you're hoping it works out and it finally does, doesn't it feel so good? What do you think? In mid-2023, I signed a year-long contract with a very large, very wealthy HOA here in California to provide high-level security services to the entire HOA in its grounds, both at several gatehouses, which is a controlled access community, as well as with multiple roving patrol units. As a former cop, this was done in a fashion that mimicked what you'd see in a small-town law enforcement agency, complete with custom uniforms tailored to the community, custom retired police interceptors with the community name emblazoned on the side, retired and reserve cops staffing the place, and so on, while also staying clear of the typical overbearing HOA security stereotype and staying within the scope of how an average security company would conduct itself. This was well received by the community due to high crime in the area, and with it being a senior community and the additional medical training our guys had, they loved us and they expressed their desire for us to be there for a long time. The previous company had been there for over 16 years and we were told many times that that's what they wanted from us. Despite the tyrannical boomer board and their excessive oversight and micromanagement of our work, things went well until the board, in conjunction with the management company, started to do this. So only four months into the contract, they attempted to change the terms of the staffing in violation of our contract by cutting billable hours in half, no more servicing the gatehouses, and attempting to give those hours over to the property management company who is not licensed to provide guard services. As was our contractual right, we declined this proposal, it's more of a declaration on their part, there was no dialogue, due to the copious amounts of time and money that we put into staffing and facilitating the service with a year plus in mind, gates included. This declination was promptly ignored by them and never acknowledged. So after we declined the above, they blatantly started to disregard and breach the contract, notably withholding payments for services in the tens of thousands of dollars and trying to say that they didn't have to pay for a service that they didn't deem acceptable, despite nothing being wrong with the work that we conducted and not letting us know until well after a month that the services were rendered completely ignoring that we are an independent contractor and control the scope of our work. Contract gave them five days to express their displeasure with any work and they never did so until they got hit with the bill. All those hours that we worked, they were predetermined and they were set at the start, mind you, so it's not like that we went up and above what we were approved to do and then tried to bill for it. I just, I believe this was all done out of spite. So the management company posted a job ad looking for people to staff the gatehouses despite us declining the proposal, causing major morale issues and difficulty keeping the place staffed. After numerous written communications from our attorney regarding the above breach and them ignoring a deadline to correct it, we ended up terminating the contract ourselves due to the uncertainty of ever even being paid for our work and having the contract stepped all over. The following things transpired or became apparent to us thereafter. So the board proceeded to send emails via their mailing list to every resident and even neighboring associated communities saying that we abandoned the community. These are residents that we fostered great relationships with and neighboring communities that we had been in talks with regarding providing them a similar security service that we lost out on because of this. They also posted it to Facebook publicly and it shows up when you search for my company as the top search result. They mentioned nothing of their breach of the contract it became apparent that we were potentially only hired on fraudulent pretenses for them to basically steal and appropriate all of our methods and proprietary stuff, only to take it over themselves and give it to their management company. This includes a lot of proprietary stuff with regard to staffing, scheduling, policies, and procedures. They even tried to poach my staff and pay them less. The management company basically used their position to bully us out after they got a glimpse of the revenue we generated. The board of directors used their connection to the local sheriff's department to illegally conduct background checks on my employees without their consent or mine, and then went and disclosed a bunch of private information about certain employees to other members of my staff. The board may have potentially illegally tracked our company vehicles without our knowledge or consent. 
and the board committed several acts that, if they were an employer, would be considered labor law violations, such as discriminating against and making derogatory statements against my employees based on gender. So for example, you're the only woman here, why don't you clean the guardhouse toilets? Or harassing my staff while they were taking their lunch or rest breaks, making it hard for them to do so without being accosted. I mean, this is one of the worst I've ever read, I think, on this entire channel, because they're illegally doing things behind the back, breaking the law several different ways, and they think they're going to get away with it. What would you do? Law, you're up. It'll be worth it. HOA Karen and President Storytime. I was stunned. My old work truck, parked in my driveway, was gone. I blinked a few times, thinking that perhaps my eyes were playing tricks on me. But no, my beloved truck was unmistakably absent. Fuming with anger and confusion, I quickly called the local towing company, fearing that my truck had been stolen. To my surprise, they informed me that my vehicle had been towed due to a complaint from the infamous HOA Karen, as the neighbors, they had just loved her, affectionately called her. I couldn't believe it. I was parked on my property on my driveway, and there was no conceivable way I was infringing on anyone else's space. The wheels of justice began to turn in my head, and I knew I had to confront HOA Karen about her unjust actions. I stormed over to her house, ready to give her a piece of my mind. Her perfectly manicured lawn and pristine white picket fence were the epitome of suburban perfection. I took a deep breath and I rang her doorbell. A few moments later, the door swung open and there she stood, HOA Karen in all her glory. What do you want? She sneered, her eyes scanning me with disdain. I want to know why you had my truck towed, I replied and struggled to maintain my composure. She crossed her arms and said, because it was parked on my property, that's why. You can't just go around parking wherever you please. I clenched my fist and I felt that anger surge within me. That's my property, Karen. My driveway. I wasn't blocking your access to your house or yard. I'm parked on my own land. HOA Karen's smug expression wavered for a moment, but she quickly regained composure. Well, it doesn't look like it to me. I'll be contacting the HOA president about this. And so she did. A few days later, a letter arrived in my mailbox, threatening a fine from the HOA if I didn't remove my truck from the illegally parked spot. I knew I had to fight this injustice, so I contacted my lawyer and we started preparing a case to prove my ownership of the parking spot. But HOA Karen wasn't done. She spread lies about me, claiming I was a troublemaker who didn't respect the rules of the neighborhood. The HOA president, who hadn't met me yet, was inclined to believe her and sent me a notice demanding I pay a fine. What? I was ticked. I decided it was time to take this battle to the next level. So I just sued the HOA for their false accusations and harassment. It wasn't long before the case reached the courtroom where my lawyer presented the evidence of my property lines and the rightful parking space. The truth was on my side, not hers. The courtroom drama seemed to drag on forever, but in the end, justice prevailed. The judge ruled in my favor, and HOA Karen's lies were exposed. It turned out that she'd been exaggerating the issue for her own twisted pleasure, using me as a scapegoat to create chaos in the community. When the HOA president discovered the truth, he was shocked and disgusted at the HOA Karen's deceit. He decided to fine her for her false allegations, causing her to be slapped with a hefty penalty. She had to pay up from the lawsuit damages and the fines. Unable to bear the shame and financial burden, HOA Karen decided to sell her house and move out of the neighborhood. It was a bittersweet victory for me, but at least the nightmare of HOA Karen's reign of terror was over. As I stood in my driveway, watching her moving truck pull away for the last time, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. The neighborhood had been rid of HOA Karen, and I could finally park my truck in peace on my own property, as I had always should have been able to do. Woohoo! Have you ever dealt with an HOA Karen? Let me know. My HOA is suing me for $2,600 over leaving a broken door on my patio for a few weeks. I'm in my late 20s, just got married, and have two kids, four and two, and a very busy job, which is 50 to 70 hours plus a week. 
Myself and my then fiance and two kids, age three and almost one, bought our first place, a condo. The condo looked okay from what we saw when we walked through it and inspected it. We noticed a few minor issues, but every place that we saw had something that was needed. It ended up being a total dump. I have had to replace so many things within this house and it has made my already busy life a living heck. All of the doors had issues that I've had to fix, the sinks, the faucets in the bathrooms, kitchen sink issues constantly which are fixed now, the dishwasher going out and so on. This is why I had the door outside while doing repairs. In the last two months, my work schedule heavily complicated being able to communicate with anyone regarding this, basically 24-7. I've also been pretty busy getting married and planning and going through with getting married, and I guess kids take some work as well. So here's the timeline. Back in September 2019, we moved into the condo in a suburb outside of Denver. Come February or March, we're fine for leaving a door on our outside porch, times three, totaling $400. By March 12th, notices were sent in the mail. We did not see a single letter of this. The person from the HOA that I spoke to acknowledged that at least some of the mail got sent back to them. In March 2021, the following year, the HOA sends us to collections and we receive a letter in the mail and I immediately call the collections agency. The next month, I request time to speak with the HOA board and I'm not guaranteed a time. I'm unable to make it to the meeting due to my work constraints and was not even guaranteed any time. What the heck? So then I get married and have my honeymoon that month, which I notified both the collections agency and our HOA about. And today, I got served for an early June court date. Here's some facts from our perspective. So our HOA assessments have always been paid on time, and we've never ever received a letter, call, or even a notice on our door about an issue or a violation. You see, this all has happened over the last two months during likely, hopefully, the busiest time of my life. After late fees, interest, collections fees, and now lawyer fees, the price will be 2600 bucks. What can I do about this? Should I just pay this and move on? Like literally move the heck out of this condo? Should I lawyer up? Jury trial? This is putting me over the edge of stress wise and I'm not sure what to do. What do you think of this answer? Get a copy of the bylaws and CCNRs and learn the rules. Associations have a ton of power and you'll have to play by those rules to get anywhere. Yeah, if you don't know what you're doing in this, you gotta get a lawyer or somebody that does know the laws in and out so they can help you out with these crazy dirty HOAs. I screwed up by fooling around with a neighbor who's on the HOA board. I know this is a first world problem, but it still sucks. I'd fooled around with a neighbor who happens to sit on the board of our building's HOA. It hadn't been an issue until recently when I declined to fool around with him. I learned that he had been dating some girl, and as far as I can tell, she does not know that he has an ex friends with benefits in the building. Feeling uncomfortable about the friends with benefits arrangement, I told him very politely what my reasons were for saying no to a request for a action. We'll leave it that way. I had to remind him very calmly and rationally that he cannot grandfather in doing stuff when he is in a relationship with someone else. Life does not work that way. Well, I think he's angry. I can't prove it without a lot of expensive legal fees that I don't think is worth the squeeze, but in short, he sits on the HOA board, and I'm pretty certain that he's an influential voice on the Architectural Improvement Committee. This is the committee that residents have to submit unit alteration applications to for approval. Yes, even something like wall mounting TVs or putting a planter on the balcony. One of the items that needs pre-approval is outdoor furniture. I imagined it was pretty pro forma. Fill out the application, make sure it's heavy enough that it won't fly off the balcony and hurt someone on the street, and bam, approved. When I saw this set that I liked for an outdoor refresh, I placed the order because I thought it would be approved without problems. It was a limited sell and a very good deal. Then I got the rejection on Friday. To make matters worse, the furniture had already been delivered because it took the HOA forever to review the application. The reason the committee provided was that the color of the sunbrella cushions were not consistent with the aesthetic of the common spaces. I immediately replied with a question. Why did Unit X get approved for their teal cushions and mine got denied? Their reply was that it was an oversight. Moving forward, they would not allow unapproved colors anymore. I just know it was him. I can't prove it without getting an attorney and alleging inconsistent application of HOA rules to pose them and find out. But again, the juice is not worth the squeeze. 
I can get new cushions that are neutral, but I can't return my fun cushions, and I'm out several hundred dollars because of it. This sucks so much. Do you agree with this answer? So first off, your HOA should have official records. Any decisions on the Architectural Control Committee are part of those official records, including emails concerning those decisions. You as a member have access to those records, and they cannot refuse you access. So, request to see the records related to your refusal, and you'll know right quick if he was involved. He should have recused himself after disclosing his conflict of interest. If he didn't, tell the rest of the Board of Directors, and they'll fold pretty quickly to your request or even request his resignation, which seems like it would all be to the best. All that aside, I should note that, in most states, they have to respond to your request for a proposed architectural change within 30 days. If they don't respond quickly enough, you can absolutely move forward with the change and they can go pound sand. Given you note that they took forever to respond, they might have already effectively forfeited their right of refusal to your request. This one got messy. What would you do if you were OP here? I would push it further, possibly, but man, retaliation. The HOA demands that I follow their rules, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss the fallout of this one, and I will see you there.